Good morning, everyone. It's Cindy from Ask Nurse Cindy, and it is Saturday morning, and I am headed over to see my grandbaby, Noah Thomas, who is here visiting from Atlanta. Now, they did not strap him into a plane seat by himself. They came with him, his parents. So my daughter, Rachel D., and her husband, Justin Thomas, have blessed us with a visit over this weekend and till the 4th of July, so I'm headed over there. But what I wanted to talk to you about today, and thanks for hopping on, I know it's early, and if you're watching this as a replay, that's fine. If you do not see the little red box uh, rectangle up in your upper left-hand corner, this is no longer live. It's only 7.38 here in San Antonio, Texas, where I live. I'm in my infamous studio, and we're gonna talk about Saturday psychology psychology because sometimes you get up and you get on the scales you're like <sighs> you sigh so it's a little play on words with psychology and I know it's early but work with me now share this video because what we're going to talk about today hit the share button is the power of being steadfast steadfast in your journey and one of the things that will trip you up is if and I'm talking about many things in life but let's of course, since most of my page is focused on um, gaining health and informed self-care, and one of the techniques I'm using to do that is using a low-carb, high-fat, healthy healthy fat, and medium protein, I'm going to turn on the air a little bit, it's, it's already muggy here in San Antonio, eating plan called the Ketogenic Diet. <clears throat> and I've been doing it for two years now, and I've lost right at 75 pounds totally revolutionized my life but I will tell you that one of the things that would have totally altered and radically changed everything is if I had not been steadfast now what does that mean that means that I am determined I am resolute I am going to regain my health the scales will catch up eventually because sometimes you get on the scales and you sigh so let's just talk about the psychology on this Saturday. I love it when I have alliteration. Tomorrow's gonna to be Soapbox Sunday, my second one, and we're gonna talk about fatty liver disease. So be sure you join in. But the psychology of feeling like it's not happening fast enough. It's not happening as fast as someone else. My friend, my coworker, that person on the internet says that they lost X number of pounds in 22 hours or, or whatever they're saying you're unique and you are worth being patient with yourself and with the process and if you have a steadfast heart if you say I will figure this out I will invest in myself I will take the time to listen to good reputable podcasts hopefully by someone that's not trying to get you to sell, to buy a bunch of crazy things that are very expensive there's great people that do not charge for their stuff. I'm one. Um, secondly would be um, Dr. Ken Berry. Then there's the dietdoctor.com. There's tons, everything you could ever want to know on YouTube for free. And when you invest in yourself, when you're steadfast in saying, whatever I've been doing for X number of years, however long you've carried a weight problem, however long you've had inflammation. Because ladies and gentlemen, this is not just it's even probably the least important thing is what the scales are telling me they do not tell me my worth do I struggle sometimes when I get on them absolutely last week when I was on that entire flight from the UK from England and had no food that I could eat other than a couple of Duke sausages and some almonds I was starving I was steadfast it's okay I'm like eat me eat me <laughs> take to my hunger Hey, there's plenty of fat still stored on the thighs. There's plenty of fat still still stored in, in the trunk. Um, I have less junk in my trunk than I had before. But what I want you to, this journey can be joyful if you're resolute, if you're steadfast in your determination that I will invest in knowledge, I will invest in finding out what foods my body responds to well and what, what foods trigger inflammation or cravings. And when people see me now um, at work and I travel the country so there's like I don't know 450 sales reps and, and then their district managers and then there's RVPs I've been steadfast in this journey for right at two years a little bit over two years and they'll sit down and they'll look at their plate and they'll look at my plate and they'll say 
they, they start justifying their food choice. I'm like, I'm not your mom. I'm not your food police. But they know that I'm resolute. They know that I'm steadfast. Or they'll, they'll, uh, they'll bring dessert by, you know, at a, at a dinner we're doing, and they'll say, well, she won't eat that. They know me now. I don't waver. Do I eat sometimes too much protein? Will I have too many almonds? Absolutely, because to me, those won't trigger that downward spiral that I'm so fearful of. Cindy, why are you afraid of taking a cheat day? Because I've been set free, ladies and gentlemen. I want that for you. I want you to be able to get up in the morning, and if you want to get on the scales, no matter what they say, when I came back from the UK, after really not eating much of anything, I gained two and a half pounds. I'm like, ah, stupid scales. <laughs> Sit in the corner. I put the scales in timeout. Anyway, so steadfast. Be steadfast. How do you become steadfast? Well, you invest in understanding the process, that the process will be different from you than someone else. You invest in, if you, I, I rarely watch TV. I can be gone an entire week and I just don't turn on the TV. Maybe the Weather Channel. That's not saying you, you if you watch TV, good for you. Um, awesome. But what I choose to do, because my schedule is so tight, I work extremely long hours. If you guys think this is my job, it's not. It's my passion, and it's my, my desire to help you. But I have a job that I'll work 60, 80 hours a week and be gone and be hopping from city to city. So what do I invest in? Well, this is one book I've been reading, and it's called Switch On Your Brain by Dr. Carolyn Leaf, L-E-A-F, and you can get it on Amazon, you can do Kindle, and my son-in-law, Justin Thomas, I appreciate you telling me about this book. Now, this book has a Christian approach to the science of turning on your brain. I am of the Christian faith. I don't apologize for it. I don't, I don't push it on you, but I want you to know that this book has absolutely opened up my mind and my heart to how my thoughts and the thoughts that I dwell on the thoughts that I allow to stay in my mind or the thoughts that I eject and say, that is, that is not healthy for me, that thought is not healthy for me, has allowed me to be steadfast, resolute. I am determined that I will make it. Five more years to get this last 20 pounds off? Okay. In the interim, I want to be a light for you in the sense of a place that it's safe to come to. I have I have like no makeup on today. I have, you know, maybe a little bit of mascara, but this is me. This is me, age spots and all, wrinkles and all, hair on my chinny chin chin and all. Friend left, came over the other day and we were standing outside and um, the light was sort of hitting like this and she reached up, she thought like an eyelash had fallen on my, my chin down here and it was like this hair. <laughs> Oh, aging is not for the faint of heart. So anyway, um, be resolute. Take time to understand that when you have a thought, you can reject it or you can accept it. The thought that you're doing great, Cindy. You're doing great, Rachel. Lauren, you are a rock star. You, you earned that trip to Cancun. I'm so proud of you. That's my daughter. She worked hard. She was resolute. The food choices you make, the thoughts you keep in your head are resolute. And if I had my very first in a long time, somebody really pushed food on me. Cause, and, and this person knows, I won't say if it's male or female, this person knows I've been resolute for two years. But this person, for whatever reason, felt very compelled to almost demand I take just a bite. It won't hurt you. And I said, I appreciate that you really want me to enjoy that but I will not do it. And I changed the subject because where I've come from was so bad and where I am now is so good. And you can do that too. And it doesn't have to be that I will be happy when I hit this certain number on the scales. Contentment and happiness comes from inside. It comes from your mind and how you write the story of your life. And I know a lot of you are in very challenging situations and money's tight and you're facing job and health struggles. But how you write the story of your life today, because when a thought comes into our brain or we see someone we know or we, we get up in the morning and the scales are, are you know, just need to go into a timeout or go into your garbage disposal, um, we can write the story. So instead of thinking, I'm never going to make it, this isn't working, you think, you know what, that's just one reflection of what I'm doing to heal my body. That's just one reflection. It's probably the worst way to measure 
success. Write the story differently and say, you know what, those scales will eventually catch up. Today, today, I will choose the best food I can afford. I will eat when I'm hungry and when I have a thought that, ooh, I'm just craving something, I'll check in with my stomach. I won't just go from, from thought to mouth. I'll check in with my stomach and if my stomach is growling and feeling like it's caving into my backbone, I'm physically hungry. If I'm craving something, but I, I take a moment to check in with my stomach and I'm not physically hungry, that thought can be rewritten. Yes, that might taste good, but it would throw me out of ketosis. Yes, that might take good, taste good for a moment, but it's going to spike my insulin and I'm already insulin resistant. I had the great pleasure of spending the day with Dr. Ken Berry. I became a patient of his. I flew out using some airline points out to Tennessee where he practices and I can't wait to get my labs back to see where I'm at so far as insulin resistance, all of my different thyroid hormones. I, I'm developing nodules on my, I have a goiter. How sexy is that? I mean, honestly, I have a goiter. So my thyroid's being what it is. A goiter. Doesn't that just sound... Or not? Well, let me rewrite my story. I'm very blessed to have good, ins good insurance and airline points so I can fly out and see a keto-friendly doctor who will help me figure out what's going on with this very unique goiter. We could, we could like, paint a little uh, face on it. <laughs> but anyway, um, I, want, I want health and vitality for you. I want you to be sassy. My luscious ladies, most of you are women. I do have some guys that follow me. I understand um, that it's mostly women, and I want us to be luscious. And if you haven't heard me talk about this lush way of eating, the L stands for lower your carbs. Carbs are addictive. Carbs cause changes in my brain. I can choose to not eat them. I can rewrite the story that I'm eating luscious food. So the L in lush is lower your carbs. The U is up or increase your fats. I couldn't make it lish, L-I-S-H. Up your fats. And when I talk about fats, I'm talking about coconut oil, butter, ghee, olive oil, especially E-V-O-O, -O, extra virgin olive oil, as Rachel Ray says. Um, I'm talking about uh, duck fat, lard, the beef, uh, the fat on your steak. Um, I'm talking about chicken thighs instead of chicken breasts. And then the S in Lush is satisfying amounts of protein, not a high protein diet, although there's people having success with a carnivore diet, but a carnivore diet's pretty almost, um, you get, you reach satiety so quickly that it, it works for quite a few people. And then the H is if you do L-U-S, you will be healthier and you will be happier. And then while I cannot guarantee happiness to, for anyone, it's a choice we make every day, how we feel about it. The ketones as your fuel when you kick out of glucosis which is where I'm using glucose for fuel and I kick into ketosis which is where I'm using fat for fuel and that fat can come from my bulletproof coffee or my fatty coffee or it can come from, come from my hips I'm using less and less fat in my diet to increase the chance that my body's going to burn my stored fat because after losing so many pounds the weight loss has slowed down the L-U-S-H, Lush. This food is delicious, it's savory, it's satisfying, and I want all my luscious ladies to feel good about yourself. And one of the best ways you can do that is invest in learning, invest in, in choosing to be steadfast. And I've said this before, but unless they hold your nose and tie your arms down, what you eat is is the only thing. Hold on, just a minute. Am I am I in your way? Uh, yes, I'm at the bar. Okay, let me move. Okay, okay, so guys, I have to back my car out, but I'm not going to get on the road. The I'm at the. Oh my, he's already behind me. Oh, you guys get to see me try to to back up. Um, but anyway, I'm going to put the phone down for a minute. Stay with me. <laughs> oh yeah, at first I thought he was like some homeless dude wanting money, but then I saw that he was in a Coca-Cola shirt. So that's pretty funny. Let me move. That's fun. Anyway, I don't want to get uh, blocked in by the Coca-Cola truck because, you know, I'm resolute, but I don't want to, I don't want to drink the, the Coke, the real Coke. <laughs> All right. So where was I? I have no idea where I was. Squirrel. Something about something. I have no idea. You guys are hoot. Yeah. So, um, 
Okay, let's talk about being steadfast. Does anybody remember what I was talking about? <laughs> oh, good. So, Tammy, Dr. Barry's in network. I have Blue Cross Blue Shield PPO, and he was in network for me, too. So, I'm going to head on over and see and hold baby Noah and play with Joshi and Layla and have some breakfast with my daughters. We've got... Um, We've got some plans to do some videos. I've got, I want to show you what I got on the cruise. I was interviewed by the diet doctor people on the low carb cruise. And look what they gave me. And you can't really see it, but it's an apron. It's a diet doctor apron. I just dropped the phone. Good Lord. Anyway, just dropped the phone. The diet doctor, you can't see it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. And then we're going to test some of the stuff that the good folks from Keto Chow sent us and let you know what we think of their chicken soup and their chocolate peanut butter milkshake. So there's great luscious foods you can have and you're worth it. You're worth taking the time to invest in understanding what ketogenic eating does. Oh, I know. I was talking about happiness. I can't guarantee happiness, but I can tell you that when your brain is operating on ketones, there's so much interesting science coming out that it helps with anxiety. It helps with um, ADD. It helps with um, bipolar. It helps with depression because whatever pathway in your brain, if you've been feeding it glucose and you've got some neurological issues, if you offer your brain ketones as its fuel, because the brain can do, it can burn both, um, it prefers the ketones. If I had a platter, I want you to imagine that I had a platter and on it I had two bowls, one bowl of glucose and one bowl of ketones and I said to the brain, which one do you want? And it would say, oh my God, I love the ketones. It prefers them actually. It operates cleaner. And there's so much interesting data coming out that it helps with a lot of neurological issues. Now, of course, results can't be guaranteed for you and your family, but I can tell you that I, I'm, I, I could be really nasty sometimes before, just my, my motions and everything up and down as my blood sugar went up and down and I was hangry. Um, I'm a much nicer person. Just ask my husband. So, that's it for me. I'm going to go because grandbabies are waiting for me. And I want you to be steadfast, or at least look up what steadfast is, because you, and only you, have the power to chew the food. Even if somebody pushes cake in your mouth, you actually have this thing called the gag reflex, and or you have a tongue that you can... Or you, <laughs> I'd love that. Anyway, so be steadfast. This is your Saturday Psychology, and I'll try to keep talking about the brain and the power of the brain as I, I reread the book by Dr. Carolyn Leaf, Switch on Your Brain, which was just a game changer for me, and thank you, Justin Thomas, again for sharing that with me. Um, I will share some more stuff with you. So the power of success is in your hands, and it's your, in your brain, and I hope that you join me in being steadfast towards reaching your health goals. You guys have a great Saturday. Talk to you soon. Bye.